A good quality burger is what I'm going to show you today and it's something that a lot of people look for when they're either eating out or eating at home. So I'm going to show you my blend of burger which uses three different cuts. A blend that I created almost two years ago. I've got my mincer here or components of the mincer which I'm going to freeze. Now I understand a lot of people probably don't have a mincer at home but what you could do is if you choose your cuts you could ask your butcher to mince that for you and that shows even the freshness of it okay so i'm going to set that aside which will go in the freezer after i talk about the meats the meats that i'm using today i've got 500 grams of chuck steak i've got small weaves of fat running through it a fantastic steak like texture that's what this cut is going to offer this burger the brisket, it's loaded with flavour and it's a muscle on the beef, on the cow itself that it's used a lot so it's going to give us a good beefy flavour and that's again something I'm after for this burger. A rump steak, again a fantastic depth of flavour, uh, it's got the perfect fat content in it which is going to give us a juicier burger and it's going to give us that bite we're after in the burger as well. Now. When it comes to blending your own burgers, this is tried a few times, many, many times actually, before we got, you know, the, the happy medium to it. Fat equals flavor and juiciness. So what I'm after is, I'm after 70% of meat to 30% of fat. Now, it depends on how you're gonna cook your burger. Now, I would recommend when you're cooking burgers, you have to cook them thoroughly. Reason being is when you're cooking a steak, you're cooking the steak on all sides. So if there's any bacteria on the steak itself, it's going to get sealed, killed off in the pan. But when we're mincing the meat, it's the outside comes into the inside, so the bacteria it's all incorporated through the, the the meat itself. So it's very difficult to kill that bacteria. Now I personally would like my burger a good medium. But if you're going to do it, cook it to a medium well, which is over the 75 degrees. Okay. So that's our meat. Now I'm going to cut the meat using a nice sharp knife. We want to cut it into manageable pieces, which are going to go through the mincer. So we want to get all that onto our tray. Now the reason I want to freeze the, the meat is because it's going to give us a nice finish to the, the minced beef itself and it's going to give us a nice texture at the end of it. And the same with freezing the components of the mincer. It keeps everything cold and keeps everything flowing. minced in anyway. but it's good now. Now the meats I've got is about 500 grams of brisket, 500 grams of rump and 500 grams of chuck steak. So that will yield when minced probably just under or there about a kilo and a half so I've paid roughly about five pound for them for the brisket about five pound again for the steak just under and five pound for the rump so we're talking 15 pound and then we are working with raw meat so we want to be Careful. So here I have a kilo and a half of meat, which I'm going to make into a good eight ounce or 200 gram burger, which is an ideal size. So I'm going to pop the meat 
and the components for the mincer into the freezer for a good half hour. So the meat now has been in the freezer for a good half hour. It's firmed up just nicely. I'll set that to the side. Also from the freezer, my bowl. All the components from the, from the mincer as well stay from the freezer. So we'll start mincing right away. Excuse the noise. I'm just gonna stop the machine briefly. I forgot to say, the medium cutter on the machine is what I'm using, okay? What that's gonna do is it's gonna give us um, a meatier texture, okay? Now, freezing the, the meat as well helps us, helps the meat shape better and goes to the grinder a lot easier, okay? So that's the medium blade on the machine. And once it's all minced, we're gonna mince it again. That is gonna give us a consistent texture. There we have the first mints. Now, every time I take this machine out, I get quite excited about when you, when you see it in the bowl, it's, 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 it's quite substantial, the amount of mints we have in that bowl. This machine was actually given to me as a present. They don't cost that much, maybe 60, 70 pound, but when you look at it in the long run, um, the same you can make by mincing your own, beef or lamb or whatever it is you want to make, sausages, things like that. I've actually got another um, attachment for my Kenwood mixer. So I've actually got two mincers in the house. And then actually I remember Graham's old mincer, the one that used to clamp to the worktop. So that's actually three mincers. And then in the charity shop, I found one very similar to Graham's. And I had to buy it, it was only four pound. So that's four collector's items for me anyway. So that's the first mincing anyway. Now at this stage, I'm going to transfer it into another bowl. But before I do, I'm just going to add this onion powder. This is really the only seasoning that I'm going to be adding to this burger mix, bar salt and pepper. So I've got a good tablespoon of onion powder. Just going in there. Bowl. Just give it a wee shovel to it, give it a nice mix. I'm going to the machine again. You can see this time how more consistent the strands are.
So there we have the mince, good to go. You can see the consistency of it now. That's a little more even. So the seasoning, the only thing that, like I said earlier, was the onion powder. I want to showcase the flavor of the beef itself, the three different cuts, which is gonna give this burger its fantastic beefy taste. So what we'll do is we'll get ready and um, prepare for shaping the burgers. Now for molding the burgers, I've got a lid here, which is the ideal size for pressing our, our burgers into shape. If you didn't have a lid, you, you can do it by hand as well. So we're looking for a good 200 grams. That is a nice sized burger. So I'm just gonna take them in. Now, the important thing here is when we press into our mold, I don't want to squash it down. I don't want to lose too much of the pockets. Now when I say pockets, what's gonna happen is I haven't mixed and mixed and mixed the mince. So when I'm pressing it in, we're just creating the smallest little pockets in the burger, which when the burger fries and the fat melts, the fat is gonna just hold itself in these tiny little pockets and keeping the burger moist. So we'll just... And you can see I've also lined the mold with cling film as well, so that'll just, just fall out nice and easy in the mold. So I'll continue on until I use up all the mints. So there we have my burgers, good to go. Now at this stage, you could freeze them if you wanted to. I've just put them onto a lightly oiled tray, separated with cling film. Once they're frozen, you could bag them off, but I will be cooking a couple of these very shortly. Now, the batch has yielded eight burgers. So by eye, they're just under the 200 grams. You could make them a bit smaller if you wanted, take it into the six ounces, it's really up to yourselves. So that's eight burgers, so that's working out at just about 1.90 a burger, which being handcrafted and the quality of meat that we've used is pretty reasonable in my eyes. So what we'll do is we'll get to the frying pan on and get our burgers cooking. Now it's time to cook the burger. On a good medium high heat, I'm gonna add just a touch of oil to the pan. That come up. Now, bearing in mind, the only seasoning this burger has had so far is the onion powder. So we have to get that nice and seasoned. Obviously, salt and pepper both sides. I have to watch raw meat touching the salt and pepper mold. I'll bear that in mind as well so we'll give them a clean later on. So that's a burger well seasoned now. Again seasoning the burger at this stage I like the smokiness the the, the oil brings to the pepper and sort of goes into the burger at the same time. So into our pan we're going to take the burger and we want to take that to a golden crust, that's gonna take about three to four minutes. Now, I wanna cook this medium to well, like I sp spoke previously, and that is going to be a core temperature of over 75 degrees, so we want to hit that at 76. But it's up to you, so you cook it to whatever degree you want. If you just want it well fired, crack on with that as well. But I want a good medium to well, but it still stays nice and juicy. Nice brown on the outside, that's what we're aiming for. So we'll come back in about four minutes to see how that's getting on. So I'm not going up to about the three and a half minute mark, so I'm just going to have a wee, a wee nosy. Oh yes, 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 yes. Beautiful. Got a nice crust on that now. So we're going to continue now and give this side three minutes. Now, even though we're cooking it to the medium well, I'm giving the same respect, cooking wise, as I would a steak. With the effort that's going through this burger, I'm going to give it the respect I would a steak. So, we'll three minutes and then we'll plate up. Now it's time to build the burger. Choice of roll, slurred bap from Stag Bakeries. 
lovely and toasted, firstly because of flavour. The toastiness gives it an extra bit of flavour. Secondly, it kind of seals the burger in a way. Now, to help protect our burger from the fillings, we want to add just a smidgen of mayonnaise on there, or butter to use. Obviously, covering both sides. You can't be doing with this one side only thing, it's rather mean, rather tight. Then on with our lettuce, some nice crisp cost lettuce, followed by our lovely sweet tomato. And now, my beef burger. Look at that. With the meat from Charles McLeod. Next, in with our avocado. You might notice I haven't had any cheese to this burger. Don't get me wrong, I do like a good quality cheese burger. But I thought today I'd substitute that with avocado. That's my own preference. You can build your burger to whatever standard you want with whatever ingredients you want. If you want to add gherkins onto that, you add the gherkins to it. You build it the way you want to build it. Being mind this is focused around the burger itself. Finishing off with some red onion, which will also give us a wee bit of pepperiness to the, to the finished article. You could fry the onions if you wanted. Just finished off with the lid. We have it. Beautiful. I'll just twist this so you can see it from all angles. There is no real decent angle to it. I think it looks pretty stunning from every angle. So that is my ultimate burger, the Nishok Chef's ultimate burger with my own blend of brisket, chuck and rump steak. Now, let's just see what we can do here. Juicy Ultimate Burger. Enjoy.